Legend, right? Yeah, Legend. Okay. Um, seeing as you've actually read it recently, <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna start? Um, yep. Legend's basically um, set in a mythical world where the Drenai were like a big empire that had mm. conquered a whole different lot of land. Yep. And people are pretty proud about being the Drenai. Mm. People, are, people are proud about being those those people. Now it's kind of receding. And now it's receding, yeah. And there's a big, massive attack from the south, I think it is, right? Uh, I believe it's from the north, the Nadia. Right, no, yeah, no, north from the Nadia. That's right, that's right. Everyone's coming from the south to try and defend, right? Yes, yes. Um, so the Nadia are coming down and they're threatening the Drenai's way of life. And this mm. is like a, a big culture that have like lived and been an empire for a long time. Mm. So we're looking at... Uh, Basically, a big war similar to the old Gates of Fire. Mm. You know, yeah, got... yeah, some inspiration um, with that, with like the Nadir and like mm. you can see like Mongols and yeah, definitely Mongols. Yeah, kind of similar to like the Dothraki, but it was written after this. So. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, definitely like two cultures colliding, one defending, one being a great nation, and then like falling into mm. disrepute, sort of yeah. thing. Um, and that's basically the basic rundown of the story. Like, um, there's going to be a war, and everyone's yeah. heading to one place, and it's and it's uh, Drostelnok. Drostelnok, yeah. Mm. Um, they have a few main characters. Drost, the legend. Yep. It's old as fuck. Well, for the to- for that kind of uh, era. Uh, era, yeah. yeah, sixty years old. And then yeah, sixty years old. And then they also have um, Rick, mm. and then they have a few other characters. Yeah, so Rick, he's like, a, is he an ex-soldier or? He is an ex-soldier. Yeah, yeah. he's an ex-captain, I think. And he's a bit of like a, a wastrel. Like he's just like bangs this like maid in the beginning. With uh, what's? Because it starts off, he's in like a tavern or whatever. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And like he's mates with the tavern owner. Yeah, and I think he bangs his daughter, and the, or maybe one of his workers or something. Yeah, I think it's the the, the wench. The yeah, but I think actually yeah, I think like, the wenches are his daughters. Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and but she's like, oh, I'm not gonna get with you. Like, she's actually dismissing him. She's like, oh, you're good for a fuck, but yeah, yeah that's right. See you later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's become a bit of a wastrel. Yeah, that's right. So um, anyway, I'll give my rating, and then you can give your rating, and then we'll pick it apart. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. I'm going to give it a good, like, 7.5. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe, no, actually, I'll give it an 8. Straight right. up 8. Yeah. yeah. And, um, it's really super, it's a good book. Mm. Um, descriptions, phew, out of the world, man. The, mm. the guy's writing is amazing. Yeah. It's really good. Um, that first part where he does go into the, the, the tavern, the description on that shit is amazing. Mm. Like, you can really, almost visually see the the storm that's outside because it's in the snow yep and um oh when she gets like hypothermia or whatever no 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 before before that oh, okay. like where he where he first goes into that tavern with it where his mate owns the tavern yeah um the description of that and the description of him like entering the tavern yeah. and letting like the breeze in and everyone else like stopping what they're doing and oh, they're looking oh, at him okay. kind of pissed off like what are you doing don't yeah. leave the door open, you know, yeah. don't leave the barn door open. Like, that, the whole description was really awesome. Mm. But yeah, um, all the descriptions in this book were great. Mm. Absolutely all of them. Um, Dress's stuff was great, the description about his knee, mm. the descri- his initial description about the character, about he's this, um, he is this legend. He, he has to live up to the legend as well, and he knows that. He knows that he has to live up to this yeah. hype. Because the the whole thing is like he walks every, everywhere, right? Yeah. But then he's like, oh, I'm just going to use a horse for like the bits no one sees and then walk into town. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly right. Fucked. Because like... It, his knees are fucked. His knees are fucked, yeah. Well, one of them is like really yeah. bad. Um, I thought that was great. I thought that was absolutely great. The parts where I thought fell short on mm. the book were probably the same things that I thought fell short in um, Gates of Fire. Okay. I felt like... Each individual moment's fantastic. Mm. Description, fantastic. Writing, great. 
and um, even the dialogue was not were not bad, mm. but I felt like um, I was all building to something. It was all building to a war, obviously. Yeah. And the water scenes were actually pretty cool. The, the mm. flights, like the description about that being like a a tide that they couldn't hold back and mm. everything else. But um, it was kind of boring. Like it didn't really go anywhere. Like the it just felt like it was um, like very very foreshadowed. Like um, it felt like the entire time we were telling, we were being told that there's going to be a war. Mm. And that's exactly what we got. Yep. And I was happy with that, but there was no surprises anywhere. Right, yeah. It just felt like um, someone gave me all the information to the book and I didn't really need to read the end. Mm. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I, I was, don't get me wrong, I really did enjoy the book. Mm. But whereas another book may lead you down a path or... Mm give you a twist or there might be something different or you know you they might be going to a war and then now you end up going, getting there or like what happens if a character dies and because he dies the supplies don't get there or something like that and yeah there's there's all sorts of different things um it just seemed like it was a a book that was um it was good but like yeah it didn't really i guess it was the same with um Ready Player One. Like, it was a really good story, but, like, it didn't... It didn't make me think. It was. It didn't, like, reinvent the wheel or anything like that. It was just right. It was just good. <clears throat> it was like, um... Yeah, no. That was it, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think necessarily think that's a bad thing, but I thought... I just uh, thought, like, like... There would have been something more, you know? Because, mm. like, David Gimmel was a pretty big name. Yeah. But, um, like I said, um... The, the moments in the, in the book are amazing mm. I think that's what really like what sets him apart from other writers is that like those moments there are moments in the book that are amazing mm. yeah um, I'll pick it, pick it to pieces and I'll say a little bit more about those later yeah so did you listen to it? yeah I listened yeah. to it yeah, yeah. Um, um, I really liked the narrator good. yeah yeah narrator was good Yeah. did you listen to it as well? yes, one point? yes. Okay, uh, cool. about at least a year ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you listen to the whole Juno series? No, I'm about... What did I... I'm about six in. And you're listening to them? Yes. Okay. I'll, uh, I've also bought them physically. But... All right, I'll, I think I'll jump on the second one. Um, I'm definitely interested to see where it's going to go, but like... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would highly recommend going through the, the publication order. So this is the, his first book. Yeah, it's got it on there. It, it jumps around the site, yeah. a lot. But um, anyway, so, I mean, I really like this book, but it's probably my second, having read a bunch of them since this, it's probably my second least favourite, but it's still very good. And for, like, a first book, it's pretty... Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Like, it was a very good first book. Yeah. That like um, informed you of everything, told you everything, mm. but um, and launched you into it. But I was just like, oh well, just accept. I thought I'd get a bit more out of it or something. Um, I spoke. Did it have the um, end bit where it talks about the history of the book and how it was written? Mm, I know. I can't remember. So, in his late twenties, like this was published in his mid thirties, I think. Oh wow. Um, or early thirties. But in his late twenties, he had like a cancer scare, and while he was waiting for the the results to come back, it was a two week wait. So he broke the draft of this, and he's like, "If I have cancer, the fortress will fall. If I don't, it will survive." Oh, okay, well, wow. interesting. Uh, and kind of bittersweet is the last series he wrote was Troy, and that's about a fortress that fell. It's an interesting thing. Yeah, and he died of cancer. Halfway through the last book, yeah. Um, I don't know if he died of cancer, but he died halfway through it, and his wife finished it. Fuck man, um, it's a gr- it's a great book. I mm. um, there's a f- few things I really enjoyed that really stick have stuck in my memory is um, when he made the deal with Bowman. I think that's his name. Yeah, like the outlaw guy. Yeah, and he's he's just like we need archers. 
you I'm just gonna to go out and then like they try and accost him because they, they think he's an old man and then he like chops the arrow in half that they shoot at him or something yeah um and also Bowman's like uh lieutenant lady or whatever she seems like really mysterious and she's the one who I'm pretty sure she's the one who like massages dresses like muscles and oh, shit yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. like get some like she does okay, a little healing yeah, stuff yeah yeah, yeah. and I think she's like an excellent example of a character where you just get this little piece of information and you really want to know more but you don't get it yeah and I think true. it's like really good yeah because if you do get her entire backstory then it's like not as fun to think about like, I felt that about a few of his characters actually on the way like there's a farmer guy who is just joining up because he doesn't want his lands to be taken away or something right. and there's yeah, two of them they're, they're, they're mates one dies right well, yeah one dies um and i thought that that was really that like that the one who survives is like i thought he was quite cool and quite he interesting changes quite a bit. yeah he changes quite a bit yeah what about the it's like an officer dude and he's like pudgy or whatever and he's like people don't like him like they think he's a shitty leader and then he like really works to like be a better leader yeah and I think he loses a couple fingers and maybe dies near the end, I'm not sure. But he, like, really, um, like, has this arc of actually proving himself and people respect him at the end of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but anyway, so I I gave this an 8.5 uh, out of 10. So That's good. That's a good one. I gave it an 8, so... Um, there are some things I don't like, like, I'm not a huge fan of the 30 and like the, the um, you know, magic priests, stuff, the priests and stuff like myself. I prefer, um, magic that kind of has rules and stuff, not just I'm magic and I can do things. Yeah. That didn't really have, um, a lot of explanation. And it was like, they could go outside their body and see stuff yeah. and do different things. But like, he had to be, a like, source priest. Yeah, source priest. You have to be. I don't know. Can't remember. I can't remember all of it. It's um, a bit weird. And it's basically a tale of good versus evil with that dynamic. Like, there's the priests of the Nadir who battle against the. Oh, yeah, the priests of the. Yeah. 30. Um, I mean, it's okay. I'm not too big on it. And this was, you know, this is like 40 years old or something now. Yeah, true. Like, he's, like he's beating a lot of tropes because, yeah. like, he's creating them, I guess. Like, um,. I believe Joe with Crombie took a lot of inspiration from him, but also did his own thing. Definitely, dress as um, almost like a nine fingers, right? Mm. Yeah. Um. What else? Uh, oh yeah, I I didn't like. I thought Vere should have just stayed dead. You know, when she got revived, I was like, oh, okay, it seems a bit like the very classic. Her. Yeah, yeah, but then she was brought back to life, and Shit. they lived happily ever after and stuff. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. But um, one thing that was really powerful was like Dross's death. Like he's like poisoned to fuck, and he's still like he's poisoned to fuck. He's got yeah. a lance in him. He pulls the yeah. lance out, and the guy who's like taunting him is like, ha ha ha, you stand dying or something. Yeah, and then he gets an axe to her head. He gets yeah. a strugger thrown at him. Snugger. Snugger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. dude, that was, oof, was really good. Um, yeah. That's kind of all the... I liked his his funeral. Oh, yes. Dude. And they sneak into the... They sneak in, and then, like, um... Yeah. They have beers with the yeah, enemy. Yeah, it was like the um, World War One Christmas kind of thing. Yeah, that was awesome. That was really cool. They just... Yes, that was fantastic. Go yeah. and have, uh, and have yeah. a beer with the enemy. Um, and I even think one of the farmer dudes or something like says something later. He's like, "Oh, I had a I had a deal with one of the the Nadia forces that like if we lose the fortress that um he'll have a beer for me. Oh, okay, or something like that. And it's just that's like cool. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's really awesome. Yeah, really cool moments. I thought the part at the start where Rick takes on all those like outlaws. Yeah, he's like a uh, it's not called a berserker, but something like that." Best, best hack or something like that. 
You have, <laughs> you have beer snack. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like three sounds very similar. To that. Yeah, beer snack. Um, which isn't really that's explained. No, no, it isn't. Um, I don't know. He's like kind of a coward as well at the start, and he's just like, oh, yeah. It's like shit. Sorry, I flinched on that one. Because mm-hmm. his mate dies. His like his lieutenant or whatever. Hey, he's like, oh, this page guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's like, oh shit. Know. He's dead now. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good story. Um, I think that, yeah, all those little moments where he saves the girl and, like, mm. rubs her and gives her the, like, fixes her for hide oh, yeah, and the finds cabinet, the cab- cabin. cabin yeah. There's some strong visuals in the cabin. Really, really strong visuals. The snow and the fire. And yeah. Like, um... There was already a fire built ready to go, so they, like he, up, when they left, he like built he built a fire, fire ready yeah. to go. Because that's like the Bushman way. Yeah. Like if you have a place and you yeah leave the fire, anyone can use it. Yeah. Mm. Um, that was really cool, actually. Also, like there was a, I thought the tension between like Rick and the priests getting to Delnock mm. and Dress holding it initially was quite cool. Mm. And also, like, the the Dross just knew what he was doing kind of thing. But yeah. even though on the way, the priest's like, oh, no, Dross can't hold the fortress because mm. it's too wide or something like that. It's yeah. like, come on, just let him do his thing. You know? <laughs> and, like, him training the, the new soldiers was awesome. Mm. And, like, he had these young guns, like, trying to fight him. And, like, oh, what about, dude, like, there's a whole assassination plot. Oh, uh, and like, like spies and shit. Yeah, where like captains and stuff are trying to like yeah. kill them. Yeah, yeah. Very cool, very cool. Mm. Yeah, normally I enjoy characters who are like more morally grey, but having Dross who has like a clear cut, like, clear cut morals. Well, he just knows because he's yeah. had a lot of experience, is the yeah. thing. Like, he knows what he wants out of it and how he wants it to happen. Mm. And it was, I thought it was really weird that, like, his wife got taken by the, the thing, I think he went and got her. Yeah, yeah, so that story was the book I just read, like, a couple of weeks ago. That's bullshit, eh? Like, she he doesn't get her back, or she's dead when he gets finds her, right? Cause he does, I'm not saying It doesn't either. really, there's no explained, eh, all of it. It's really good. It's, yeah, it's, it was such a good story. Um... I don't want to say anything, but it's like um, you got to wait like five books to get to that. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Well, yeah. No, I um, enjoyed it. But yeah, it, yeah, it's good. What else? What else was in it? Um, we talked about the bits and pieces that you don't see about him being a legend. I thought, yeah, like a legend and war really does like bolster. Yes. Yeah. The the troops and stuff and like his. He had to say a, a speech about like, um, like to to sort of like rally everyone to get ready for battle, mm. and he was just standing there, and his inner monologue was like, "I wish one of the other legends would do it, like one of the right. people that was legends when I was just one of these guys yeah, yeah, yeah. would say something." It's like, "Oh, it's a bugger that they're all dead, and I've, I've got to think of something." Yeah, he's like, and he also is kicking himself afterwards because he's like, "Oh, everything I said was a fucking lie. People are not going to die in glory." And they're not like, yeah. I thought they'd die with their guts hanging out. Yeah, and in pain. Yeah, but that was cool. I, I yeah, I really enjoyed the book. Yeah, there's lots of good bits to it. Yeah, I mean there was some convenient plot things like the um, right as they're about to lose, right at the end, when there there's only like a few of them left and they're about to be charged. Um, then Ulrich gets like this message saying, "Oh, your fucking your cousin's like causing shit up north, or whatever." He's like, "Oh, I'm I'll gotta go." He's like, "No, nope, that I they said I would go." If, it's, it's something like that. I can't remember what it was, but he said, "Did you remember that?" Yeah, because Ulrich was a king, eh? Yeah, of the of the Nadia. Yeah. Um, um, it seemed kind of quite because he was about to about to, to win, basically. Yeah. And then he's he had to leave. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I'm pretty sure it was like a civil war was brewing. Yeah, something like that. The only person who was pressing it was um, like the lieutenant guy who went and learned all the 
how to make a uh, siege towers and stuff like that. He was like the guy who was in charge, right? Yeah. And he was the one who um, dressed through the exit. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I think, like, when he was gone, it was like, oh, well, I've got this other thing I've got to deal with. Yeah. Mm. Like, I could, probably could take this place, but, like, you know, wouldn't have the f- forces to yeah. march on that. But I'm sure he made some kind of pact where, like, I'll leave if this happens or something. Oh, okay. Something like this is quite convenient, though, eh? Um, but it's pretty minor, like, um, it's, it's a great book. Yeah, it's good. It's definitely up there, but it's not um, it's not perfect. So, mm. but the writing in it was good. Like, mm. I almost give up. Wanted to give it more points because of some of the moments. Yeah, uh, but I didn't really feel like it. it uh, yeah. So, but yeah, it was a good one. So um, I won't say too much about the next one, like in terms of story or anything. But it's set. Straight after? Or? No. It's set like 150 years later or something. And it follows a descendant of Ulrich and uh, Regnack. Like he's got bloodlines of both of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's very cool. Okay. It's actually my favorite. Is the Drenai still a thing or is it like, what the hell? Uh, yes. Yeah, so all the books are set or sort of cover the history of the Drenai. Whether they've been like in recession or they're fully in power like it's just it's kind of like a, a history of their land oh, okay. in, um, a few hundred years because there's also a prequel series that follows Waylander who's my favourite character of the series he's more of a morally grey kind of character and he's like this crossbow that fires two bolts at once and it's fu- oh man it's so good oh, I think it's the third one um but that's set like a couple hundred years before this timeline. Oh, okay. So before, so before Dross. The entire timeline is about three to four hundred years. Oh, okay. Because um, in the prequel Dross one I just read, Waylander is mentioned, but he's just like a myth. Like it's been so long that no one really knows if he was real or not. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's really good shit, man. Um, so what other books has Gimmel done? Like, not in the Trino series. So he's got, done the series called the Rigante series. I don't know much about it, but it's uh, another fantasy series. Um, and he's done this other one called, uh, we did the Troy one, but um, the Stones of Power, and it's like three trilogies I think and one set in like um in Britain I believe possibly around when the Romans were there yeah and it has some magic elements and then there's the Greek series with um I think I showed you the covers of them like sorry Dark Prince and Lion of Macedon oh yeah, 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 yeah. I gotcha I gotcha I gotcha yeah um and then there's uh, like a post-apocalyptic one called the John Cheno series, but they're all kind of interrelated with uh, these stones, stones of, of power. power. Yeah. Oh, cool! Yeah, all right. Yeah, but I think I'll just like read all of the Drenai, which is eleven books. A lot. But jump they're in. not too long though. Yeah. Like, it wasn't you, it wasn't that big. Re- if you did all, only read one of these books, you could actually read it in a day. Probably like 12 hours. Do nothing else. Yeah. I've never <laughs> done that, but, you know, I've read one in like four days or some shit once. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. Oh, I'm good. It's good shit. Yeah. Do you so think you would um, go for the keep series? Going or? Yeah, I think I'd give it a go. Um, yeah. Only problem is, um, I just started doing Lord of the Rings and oh okay it's actually not bad as an audio book yeah. it's not bad I, when I first um, was in audio books I gave it a listen and I was like this is god awful yeah but because I'm used to all the old English and stuff now ah uh, okay that's not so bad um, it's not super old English either so it's pretty yeah. good lots of I can see uh, where the people have taken a lot of stuff from it and I can also see that um, probably you know, there's things that actually should 
be corrected now, you know, mm. a little bit like old old school and stuff. Yeah, well, lots of weird shit going on in it as well. Like mm. there's, there's characters that are stronger than Sauron that don't that don't do anything. They just like chill out in a fucking tree. Right. It's just weird. Mm. But um, yeah, it's no, very, it's okay. Mm. And also I've got um, the third of uh, Remini Feist's one to go to the before. Oh yes. So, okay. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go. So I've got a few fantasy ones on the go, but oh, yeah. I might do. I might do the Dreamy. I think. Uh, I think that was. It was definitely good enough for me to. Um, want to, go for mm. the next one. I feel like if Raymond E. Feist could describe this, describe and write scenes as well as David Gemmell, mm. the Rift War, would be. So up there, man. Okay. Honestly, the first the first book he he was almost writing mm. like that. Like the first, um, I remember the first book was really really good of Riffle and the, and the magician, and then um, and, the, and the second book was was pretty good. But there's moments that are like a lost where like you get like a bunch of like villains riding over a hill, and you don't really get as much fear from it. Like oh, these characters oh, could okay. die. You feel like more like oh, they've got to survive because this the book's about like this guy or whatever, you know. Yeah. Whereas the whole time in, in Legend, I felt, you know, Dress could die. Yeah. I did feel, or like Rick, you know, even though it was about him, you know, it could yeah. carry on with someone else. Oh, I forgot about um his, how he got the Satuli, like the tribesmen nearby. Like to he, help out too. Yeah, like beat up uh, one of their chief or whatever. Like it's kind of cliche, but I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I thought it was cool. He was very um he was very smart to do all those different things and like yeah. create little like ideas to yeah. bolster the ranks. So yeah. Um oh I I was watching a live stream with uh Patrick Rothfuss and Jim Butcher and he talked about the Rift War one and it seemed really cool even though it was like just a weird side thing of the world. It was talking about like this metal poor nation. So they've got like no metals, no coins or whatever. And their armor's made out of wood, or something like that? Yeah, um... I was like, oh, that's like a really cool thing. I don't know. Yeah, like, uh... Well, Rift War's about, like... There's lots of different, like, planet... Or, I guess, w- like, worlds. Like, there's lots, yeah. lots of different, like, universes and stuff like that. I'm not really sure how it works. There's yeah. lots of different, like, worlds that people live on. Mm. And you have to have, like, a magic portal to go there. Okay. And it's really weird, because it's, like, Game of Thrones fighting a weird nation that is like com- just completely completely different like it's like Romans but like like they said like the that that world has no metal has no metal at all right. it's all it's got is um and it's got no horses and it's got no animals and like the humans there were put there in the creation of the universe when all these different sort of worlds were being made and everyone lived on all the worlds. Sounds almost like hints of sci-fi as well. Oh, it's really interesting. Like science, science fiction fantasy. Yeah, it's really cool. Really cool. Um, and so, like, the humans end up being on this world. I think it's called Calawan. And um, they cut down the trees and they use saps to, like, dye them different colours and everything else. And they use a different thing to, like, harden them. So their swords are made out of wood. Oh, but they're right. so hard... They're, they're mm. sharp and hard as steel mm. and um, they like ride around in like red praying mantis things and yeah. like their whole culture is completely different their whole culture is more like a, it's like a, a weird um, Game of Thrones type Roman mm. whereas the main the main um, world that everyone is on is like sort of like a Lord of the Rings type mm. there's orcs and elves and everything else and then there's the High King and right. everyone listens to him and if he dies then his son takes over and stuff like that yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to check it out oh that's cool it's I added really it cool. to my uh, wish list on some books I um just give it a bit of a listen and like it's quite mm. it's quite cool because a lot of weird diverse things happen to it like you get a character that just gets killed off or the, a character that something crazy happens to them and then yeah. you never see them again and then 
Yeah. All right. Nice. Um, just while we're talking about fantasy, um, have you heard of Tad Williams? I had I heard the name thrown around. Yeah. What um, does he do? He no. did the series called. Uh, maybe it's the the first book is called The Dragon Bone Chair. Oh yeah, someone told me about the Dragon Bone Chair. I think the guy who told me about the name of the one told me. Uh, yeah. All right. But what what's the guy? Well, yeah, what is it about? So apparently, when like a Game of Thrones came out. People were saying it was a rip-off of a Dragon Bone Chair. Oh. So, uh, that's kind of just, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, okay, I'll check it out. So, I bought the, bought the first four books. Oh, God. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. 